Thank you for coming to the Amber Shows. Please, after you watch my video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. Also, uh, leave me a comment or tell me what else you want me to talk about. And also share my videos. I'd appreciate it. Thank you. James Madison High School in Houston, Texas. Uh, the principal there, Carlotta Outley Brown, says what you show up wearing, dropping your kids off at school, is setting a bad example of appropriate attire in outside settings. This school is majority brown and black children, which to me has clearly has racial undertones. 58% of Hispanics are in that school. 40% African Americans attend that school. Once one parent, uh, she said if it's nasty outside or misty outside and she has on a hair bonnet, uh, she feels like it's no one's business. In the letter to the parents, Brown wrote, sagging parents or shirts and t-shirts were off limit to dads low cut tops, leggings that are showing your bottom, and shorts that are up your behind. The same with PJs and anything that looks like PJs are prohibited. She also says uh, that she, head scarves, uh, bonnets, satin caps, um, the, the parents cannot be allowed entering the school or allowed on the school premises if you have them on. The guideline applies to off-campus events as well, including uh, games, um, uh, um, all types of school events after uh, school events as well. The guidelines still apply. Uh, Brown herself is African American. Uh, she's a Madison High School graduate as well. Uh, and she said she feels it's important to have high standards and to demonstrate to children uh, how they should dress in educational settings. But those are the children who should dress in educational settings. These aren't, the parents aren't in the educational setting, but uh, I feel like it's elitism uh, and I feel like it's respectability. Uh, uh, and now Ashton P. Woods, he's a candidate for the Houston City Coun Council and a founder of Black Lives Matter, uh, says that she should be fired. He said most of the parents, he said, cannot afford to comply with this dress code. Uh, this is not 1984. Zef Capo, he's president of the Houston Federation of Teachers, described the rule as classist. The letter announcing the policy appears to have been sent out when a parent, Jocelyn Lewis, came on campus to enroll her child and she had on a headscarf, she had on a t-shirt dress. Thinking that there had been a mix-up, she explains that she was a parent not a student, but the administrator told her the rules applied to her and she could not come into, into the school to register her child. She said she was getting her hair done later that day. She said she could have been Muslim, even though she's not. She could have been, it could have been her religion, Muslim. It could have been um, any other religion uh, that requires your head be covered, your hair be covered. Uh, but she said that uh, she was not allowed into the school. So at the time, she did ask uh, them to bring out the policy, show her the policy that is written. And at that time, it was not written. See, this is what made the policy get written because the parent decided to challenge it. When she challenged it outside and they would not let her in school, they called the police. And she was escorted off campus and told she could be arrested. So another parent, Rosemary Young, she told the news station KTRK that she rushed to school uh, on a Tuesday after her son broke his arm only for the school officials to hand her a copy of the parent dress code because she was wearing a satin scarf. That's what made them send the letters out after that as well. So now another thing's going on. New York City measles outbreak is worsening. Uh, the infections have, ne have reached nearly 400 people including three pregnant women. Uh, most cases are coming out of Brooklyn, Williamsburg, and uh, Borough Park neighborhoods. Those are mostly uh, the Jewish neighborhoods. Now, this is why you must get inoculated, though, as soon as possible. Your children should be inoculated. Uh, I mean, measles is back. This is way, this is 50 years uh, ago that this was happening. And, and uh, so you must get inoculated. I feel that you should um, because you have your friends, your classmates, your neighbors, your loved ones, your fellow New Yorkers are all at risk. More than 20,000 pounds of beef patty has been recalled for plastic contamination. So if you are eating uh, beef and you have you got those already made beef patties, check your freezer for all the recalled beef patties. Uh, they, were, they were shipped to food service locations nationwide. 
tilapia. Those of you who eat tilapia, I ate it one time, decided to research it because I was wondering why is it so much in the black communities? Why in all the fish stores and all the restaurants they were offering tilapia? And I wanted to know why. Like the same reason uh, Newport cigarettes are so prevalent in our neighborhood and cool cigarettes and camels, you know, like certain people, certain ethnicities were are eating and drinking certain things. Uh, so I researched tilapia and as of 2013, approximately 50 species of fish have been subject to genetic modification. Okay, uh, 400 fish trait combinations. The modifications have been conducted on food species such as the Atlantic salmon and tilapia and common carp. So you know. So I was wondering again, what type of food did Jesus eat? Because Jesus was a man who walked this earth and his diet actually consisted of bread, wine, olive oil, legumes, fruits, and vegetables. Our religious beliefs did prohibit the consumption of certain foods uh, that shaped the Israelite diet. Okay, you guys, have a wonderful day. Thank you for coming to the Amber Shows. Please give me a thumbs up. Please comment on that uh, school ban of head of headscarves and things like that. I want to hear what you have to say about it, and please share my video. Have a wonderful day. Thank you for coming to the Amber Shows. You've been Amberfied.